were in uh, Explore uh, Europe or you've been only in US? I was in, yeah, in, in Europe as well. In Europe as well. Oh my God. So, yeah. so, uh, I understand that the trip was, um, good only in one direction. We were, you were a king of the party in Europe and then you come back and it was like, uh, or you're very often in Europe. How, how often you're, you're traveling very often to Europe? Maybe like four, four, five times this year. So not that bad. Alexander, for you, you know, not jet lag, I believe. Uh, guys, I'm jet lag. Yeah, I just came back uh, on Sunday. Actually, I took, um, well, after after explored and I took vacation, mm. uh, I just came back yeah, on Sunday. All right. So this um, is perfect. I'm still wi widely awake in the morning. Uh, all right. That's, that's true. That's true. So, um... I don't know how how are you, but I I came from the um, uh, reality. Let's say that it was very much uh, based on you know hardware, uh, compute on your premises. I don't know what about you, can one you 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 are well as well with the uh, history of data center experience, or are you the cloud native guy? How how is the things? Well, actually, I've been I mean, both in the hardware and and software business actually. Um, well, so I uh, came into VMware really through did. an acquisition uh, mm -hmm. of a company called VeloCloud. Mm. Right? We, okay, we were one of the startup that um, tried to move from a hardware uh, router to a software defined uh, wire array network. Then, I mean, after acquisition, then I left uh, to another startup called Pensando Systems. Mm -hmm. So we basically built uh, SmartNIC. Mm -hmm. um, for the data center, and we work with uh, VMA on Project Monterey, right, of what became the DPU product today. Um, and then I came back to VMware to basically work work on edge computing, which is, again, sort of back to software again, right? In, um, so, and I, I mean, I, I believe in the end, the software still has to run on some kind of hardware. Right. In the end, right? <laughs> no matter yeah, whatever then... they told you, there is some hardware behind it, right? But um, my question to you, it's uh, if you are um, as well, like you came from this world of hardware and uh, the time when the, let's say, edge computing was not called edge, but it was called just on-premises data centers. Yeah. Or, or uh, how, how you, Alexander, you, you as well came from that part. Uh, no, I didn't come from the, well, I came from a hardware part, from, but from another mm -hmm. hardware part, from the actual manufacturing, right? <laughs> All right, okay. I that, used to deal funny. with steel and machinery, and so the, the true hardware. Um, the true hardware. Yeah, the true hardware. Sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Why well, I want to ask that question and, and see your background, guys, because I'm coming from the old days, right? Uh, like the hardware related. So cloud for us, it was just a movement of workload to somebody else hardware, right? And what we realize, what I realize, and uh, the company that I'm responsible of, we realize over the last year is that everybody forget about edge. Okay, it was called on-prem, right? So the on-prem wasn't sexy. So everybody was talking about cloud native, Kubernetes, moving to the Azure, big uh, hyperscalers, but Everybody wants to look like, ah, eh, this is, you know, like your older brother or, you know, a little disabled brother that we won't want to talk about is Edge. And right now, after this couple of years, uh, the market figured out that, wow, well, well, there is a lot of happening there and we just forget about it. And I think uh, I had a conversation with Mike and Road from Dell um, a couple of weeks ago uh, that when you forget about Edge, and we forget about the thing that the edge is actually sustaining a lot of our workloads. We open ourselves for a big problem from compliance perspective, tooling perspective, very different angles. And my question, Alexander, for you especially right now, it's what do you think what the VMware strategy regarding edge will be? Because this is somewhere from the VMware came from, right? The VMware came from on-prem, it's the, the, the the beginnings, right? So how how they want to how the VMware want to sustain that and build strategy around edge? Uh, well, I, I think as we've seen with with cloud, right? There is a um, you you see the the pendulum swing from one side to the other. We used to have 
as you said, very much um, data center on-prem driven businesses with everyone hoarding their their data centers, their equipment on site. And then there was this huge shift to cloud and cloud only or cloud and cloud first, especially during the pandemic. And the pandemic actually really enforced it to say, well, actually, you need to be much more flexible and you need to not rely on your on-prem data centers, resources, et cetera. So that you know, made that pendulum swing to the other side, to the extreme. And now I think we're on the way back to say, well, actually, everything we do in life, whether it's your personal life or business life, we live with IoT devices, we live with smart homes, we live with the smart grid, or we're developing the smart grid, we have smart factories. So everything is very much edge device driven. And guess what? The data that is being generated and helps us to be more intelligent and smarter is also based on edge devices and, and edge capabilities. Um, so that it, it, it requires and sort of that's the, the change in the market, the change in behavior, whether it's it's on the industrial side or mm -hmm. the, the personal side, the consumer side, that really requires now a new way of looking into where do I actually need that compute, right? It, it could be on-prem, it could be uh, in the cloud, but actually I need to have sort of that hybrid capability that allows me to move my workloads or my applications where that data is generated and where I have where I need and where I have to have those real-time insights to really be more intelligent, more proactive, and really gain from what I have in compute. Um, so that's where VMware then has taken a step to say, well, actually, we've already seen it on the telco side, right? The, the whole carrier business, the, the, um, the, the telco carrier networks to really go into you know, the satellite uh, networks and satellite capabilities. Well, that actually really helps us to harvest the data and harvest the traffic out there. Um, and we can actually re relate that back to the normal, I would say, the, the normal ways of processing data, et cetera, on an enterprise side. And therefore, let's bring those capabilities to the enterprise and let's expand based on what we do on the IT side into the edge, into the distributed edge. Um, so whether that's retail in shops, stores, shelves, um, or whether that's on the manufacturing side, out into the machineries, to the factories, um, distributors, dealerships, et cetera, right? So that's really, VMware has taken its core capabilities. We haven't really modified those much yet, um, but really then tuned it towards the high performance at those distributed or highly distributed edge locations. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, my question here, because some of the customers are asking as well for that, and I see this uh, question happening uh, on the on the market as well, is if the edge uh, strategy of VMware, it's like a response for Azure Stack, uh, Anthos, and uh, AWS Outpost. So the hyperscalers goes to edge and uh, you know we are there forever <laughs> let's say 20 for last years and so this is the response or this is just like uh eh, forever no i don't i don't think it's a response right because we do have very close partnerships with the hyperscalers mm -hmm. um but I, I think what what we've been trying to do is cover that white space that's there to say well actually at the edge uh, neither an edge stack nor um, an, an Amazon outpost, et cetera, could really meet those edge requirements today because they have been born in the cloud. Yeah. Uh, we've been born on-prem, more or less, right? So we've been able to tune our hypervisor to really get into those real-time deterministic um, features and capabilities to have that real-time response that is close to bare metal and have that luxury to operate on-prem as well as then break out into the multi-cloud, right? So mm -hmm. we are kind of that, um, I would say that bridge now um, and covering that white space at the very edge um, and then relate back to the hyperscalers of the many there are. So, gotcha. and you've seen that at Explore, right? We've announced new partnerships with IBM and others um, to do exactly that. Okay, so when it's about the strategy, uh, do you think that there is a lot of story to tell or just tell to the people who are from the 
let's say, area that was a little forgotten last year is that, hey, we remember about you. <laughs> so how do you want to approach this? A new story or this is just a continuation of the of the talk that we have seven years ago, five years ago, and then cloud first, like you said, and then we move cloud wise and multi-cloud, right? So is that two stories or one? No, I think it's just a continuum and, and the, the matter of the fact of where the market is moving, right? And and I think, so we, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We're yeah. not reinventing what edge is, right? I mean, yes, there is obviously new capabilities that are required and AI and the, the drive for gen AI capabilities, et cetera. It's just exacerbating again the demand for compute power in those distributed locations. Uh, but I think it's more geared towards now the enterprise saying, well, actually, we don't want to invest into new things, right? We already have the cloud. We already have the data center capabilities. What else can we do with existing technology? And VMware is a proven technology. We just tuned now and, and based on last year's announcement, this year's updates on, on roadmap, we, we, we just keep tuning what we've got to really now meet those requirements at the edge. Um, so there is nothing... I would say brand new. We're just you know, deploying those compute capabilities in a different manner to really suit the edge that's that's there and, and has been recognized. It's just it's now been recognized even more so because it is a value driver and could be a strategic competitive or competitive differentiator for many enterprises, right? If they are just smarter in terms of managing the edge, whether that's a factory, whether that's a personal, I don't know, a health device, et cetera. Um, that's all potential new revenue streams, service opportunities, etc. Mm-hmm. So basically what we're doing here, we're getting up to speed with the edge that we had over the years to met the requirements that the business used to in the cloud business. And now they want to move part of that workload back to the environment where they will feel uh, secure. They will be able to use seamless tooling ideas generally get to speed right so continue like you said yeah and think about it i mean if if you look into say i mean if, if we're taking taking critical infrastructure like um power grids right um many of the regulators and federal requirements actually don't allow you to have data in the cloud so yeah, if, if you want to now virtualize the grid you still need to have that on-prem or you know within your sovereignty um, you know, covered compute to actually process the data, provide some of that data to the regulators, etc. So there are certain regulatory frameworks as well that just simply don't allow you to operate in the cloud. Um, mm-hmm. So the com- the combination now of a sovereign or sovereign offering like you know VMware's sovereign cloud offering plus then edge computing actually allows you to really do the best you can in you know within the the regulatory yeah, in, the, in the legal uh, legal environment correct so the new new ideas you know, so you said that it's a continuum but every continuum if it needs to be you know like a, get attraction on the market need to bring some new ideas what i realized on explore there was actually two new sentences uh, that maybe one new definition that surprised me there's a new term called edge native apps so we used to cloud native apps right it's like everywhere so the edge native apps. So let's talk about it first. And how you want to um, um, advertise that term? What what it means for a humor from the strategy perspective, Alexandra? And then Kang Wan, if you can describe it a little bit from the technical perspective as well, how you want to uh, by the products get to that point. So. Yeah, I mean, just from a strategic perspective, right? And I'm just continuing on on what I've said mm-hmm. is edge native apps are really those applications that you have operating very close to where the data is being generated, the sources of data, right? So if you have like uh, healthcare or health devices that are very close to the patient, you don't need to have this huge corporate app that will sit in the data center and process, I don't know, huge amounts of data, right? You Mm -hmm. just basically need that app to I don't know, have a sensor data from your heartbeat or your temperature or God knows what, right? Um, So those are apps that are really, they're born out at the edge to really just pick up some very vital data of a person, a machine, et cetera. Um, That's what we refer to as edge native apps. They are developed Mm -hmm. to have certain capabilities, 
but don't necessarily have that full stack capability that we're used to from an enterprise application. Um, and those applications therefore need a different type or capability of management, right? You don't have to have your data center enterprise edge capabilities, but you need to have, a, you potentially have hundreds, thousands of apps out there that are, you know, like developed on a low code, no code basis, um, therefore very different in terms of update cycles, deployment cycles, etc. cetera. Um, and that requires some different capabilities than what you're used to on the corporate app side. Um, so the, the strategy or the, the response from VMware was, well, Yes, we do have Tenzu as a broader application management and platform capability, but those edge native apps require something very different, something very agile, uh, nimble um, to be managed out there in thousands and millions of distributed edge locations. Um, mm, yeah, true. So, and, yeah, um, Congress, if you yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the question here, like, Let's get an example, right? This, I, I, look, I, I love the example of heartbeat uh, analysis because this brings, you know, like very clear vision what we're getting here. So we have, uh, we used to that, that we have a huge uh, or monolith application that process the data on site, or we, or some companies are already after that stage and they're putting in microservices. So let's focus on microservices part. And <clears throat> can one, how we will, um, manage to deliver that on the idea of VMware Edge. So we want to this heartbeat to be analyzed on site, uh, low latency, but from second side, uh, probably it could be nice if we will have some summary or somewhere, right? And it's a bigger non-monolithic application, probably, hopefully running or in on Kubernetes somewhere, <laughs> let's say. It not needs to be a hyperscaler, it can be a different data center in the headquarter of the of the of the healthcare institution, yeah, like an, and and I mean generally, right? What we what we have seen is not, it's not like the edge native application that's just self-contained, right? It's typically always done in conjunction with something else, right? Maybe in the cloud, in the data center, and I mean typically, what you want to do is just to reduce the volume of data, right? That has to be sent upstream. Um, like actually at Explore, we have uh, our partner up there, uh, Kindrew, right, that talks about the application that they are developing for uh, wind turbine predictive maintenance. Right? And again, if they have to actually send out the data to be processed in the cloud, and they're talking about terabyte of data a day, and in fact, it's just impossible to or impractical to do that right? over an unreliable link, for example. So instead of, instead of doing that, I mean, they they try to process the data as much as they can locally, right? And then just updating the metadata uh, into the cloud. But if you look at the overall uh, architecture of the applications, you still going to have some components, right? Sitting in the cloud uh, and some components that are highly distributed, right? To where the data source is. And you want to be able to deploy those components, right? Just a big applications. Uh, and it's no longer monolithic, right? Because all these different components are spreading all over the place and you need a way to to manage the update, uh, the life cycle of these applications. And you just need to actually treat the edge slightly differently from uh, the component in the cloud. Yeah, so we can assume that uh, by tooling, for, for sure it's going to be a Tensor platform if you talk about containers, probably a little bit of Tensor service mesh uh, just to uh, allow the networking without the toil of hardcore uh, L2 overlay configuration, a little bit of SAS or uh, or general yes divan uh, from VMware. I understand that part, but when it's about approach, what you said, there is unreliable link usually, not always, but usually it's something that we have because we want to have connectivity, but. Uh, it's lost life, right? How different you you see this that the application as well infrastructure architecture needs to be done to be sure that the application or on these containers that are running on edge understand that something happened because usually they think that it's a perfect connectivity everywhere. Yeah, we have perfect life. You know, in data center, twenty five gigs everywhere, low latency, 
nice life, right? And suddenly we're landing in the zone which is completely uh, unpredictable. And uh, do you have any additional tooling or you've used Tanzu uh, uh, features in, inside that? Yeah, it is a combination of the two, right? I mean, for example, we we come up with some like design pattern, right, for the applications that need to sit at the edge. Uh, as you say, um, the link could be unreliable, right? So let's say you want to send some messages, right, or metadata into the cloud, and the link can go up and down. So what do you do in that situation? Um, you either have to do that or handling that unreliable connection in the application itself, or you can actually rely on the infrastructure to be able to buffer, right, and basically retransmit the data when the link connectivity is restored, right? So that way, the, as an application developer, I don't need to worry about uh, the different condition at the edge because as long as you run on the platform like the VMware uh, Edge Compute Stack, there are certain components that will be able to take care of this unreliable connectivity. Uh, basically something that's unique to what we want to do at the edge. Okay, so uh, you can address that both, right? To summarize, so one application design and second, the platform, uh, infrastructure platform. Capabilities, and exactly. Capabilities, right. And uh, when, you, when, you, when you talk about platform capabilities, um, you mean only software? or as well we need to some dedicated specific hardware into it, or we can use what we have already. Well, I think that's a combination, right? Because in the end, um, so I always believe it should be, everything should be software defined, but hardware accelerated, right? Or hardware optimized. So if you look at what we are doing with, uh, with GPU, I mean, there are certain things you would have to do, right? To take advantage of the hardware. Uh, but the idea is we have to try as much as we possibly can. I mean, as the infrastructure layer, right, that will be running at the edge to sort of decouple, right, what the application has to know about the hardware and build that abstraction layer. And that's something that VMware has been doing uh, for many, many, many years, right? We have done it very well, right? So it's to hide that complexity of the hardware. But in the end, the infrastructure still have to deal with what are the adapter, right, that we need to support? What are the accelerator, right? Maybe like the GPU that is available on uh, certain locations. But in some locations, the GPU may not be available. You have to use the CPU. But how do you do it in such a way that as an application developer, I don't need to worry about, oh, at this site, it doesn't have a GPU, so I need to build my application differently. And at another location, it has a GPU, I need to write the model differently. Right. So this is something that we are working on to sort of build an abstraction so that way uh, the application developer doesn't have to deal with all these different uh, heterogeneous environment that you will see at the edge. Okay. Um, and thanks for that. I think that I believe as well, right? So it needs to come align. And, uh, and, and another thing is if you want to uh, set up a reliable edge, uh, the standardization is needed. Like it's it's proven fact. You, we don't need to talk about it. You know, it's everybody realized that in some moment the standardization is a key to sustain operability. But right now, at least the explore, uh, there was a only tool that helps. Only two technologies from VMware help us to set up the edge. It was a lifecycle manager, uh, lifecycle manager, basically in the center. And there was uh, something uh, that uh, allow us like um, uh, profiles, host profiles to do that. Yeah. Line. Right now we start to see another four letters shortcut called Zeko, right? <laughs> and, and, and the Zeko, which, which is um, expanding into a VMware Edge Cloud orchest Orchestrator. And we're really curious what is it? Because everybody waiting for some magical software that it will, you know, like you will test like this edge. It's a class D edge. Please configure it for me this way as my template for that kind of locations. Is working this way or it's completely different approach? What is it? it it's slightly different um, approach, right? And it's we sort of taking the learning from working with the customer to, I mean, deploy all this infrastructure, right? And application to the edge. And we sort of realized that, hey, it has to be done 
slightly differently, right? Number one, taking into account very, very different uh, infrastructure size, right? I mean, you could be dealing with one node, two nodes, three nodes, multiple nodes at the edge. And the hardware form factor could be very different. And the other one we talked about uh, earlier, which is the unreliable connectivity nature of the edge, right? So we have some some site that could be going up and down, right? We have customer here in the US that told us uh, they have 800 locations and any given point in time, at least one of the site has lost the connectivity, right? So how do you deal with that? Yeah, how do you deal with that unreliable connectivity, right? The other one is sort of what we call the submarine mode, right? The site could be coming up, get, gaining connectivity, then it's gone. Right, thing of like cruise ship, for example, right? That um, maybe it has lost connect connectivity for a long time, and you will regain connectivity over a satellite, for example. So, how do you deal with with that? And so, we believe that uh, the right way to actually deal with managing the edge is instead of reaching out to the edge to try to manage it, you want to flip that communication model. So. Uh, the way that we're going to do it with, or we are doing it with, with Veco, uh, VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator, is the infrastructure, is the one reaching out to the management to pulling down the information. So that's why we, you may have seen the word, we, we say pull mode orchestrator, right? Because you want the infrastructure to be reaching out to the management, pulling down the state of what you want the infrastructure to be. And this could be the software releases, the applications manifest, right? What you want to be deployed at the edge. And then from that point on, you have this software agent that's mm -hmm. sitting at the edge on the infrastructure itself and try to reconcile the state of the infrastructure to match the policy. All right, right? so, so this now is something no like, um, like you have a Terraform for example, uh, manifest, right? And then you apply to the infrastructure and infrastructure try to get to the configuration, not the configuration going one by one to get the infrastructure to it, right? Exactly. So you, you have the same situation here. We can um, put it a similarity like, for example, it's uh, many years here with us, there are uh, access point controllers that, you know, you just type this, uh, this uh, you know, like um, you connect the table you type the serial number and the configuration going on the, from the cloud, right? So here is the same yeah. situation, right? So you have the specific edge, specific um, branch office, let's say, uh, with the setup. The setup is a pool on the cloud, the configuration is on the cloud, and the, and this um, setup is communicating to the cloud, pulling out the configuration and configure itself to be um, to align, right? Because maybe something changed when it was offline, right? That's, that's exactly. the idea. Exactly. Exactly. Mm, so very and, nice. Very and that way you can keep the edge uh, fairly autonomous, right? Meaning that the only the management or, or the policy or the source of truth is kept in the cloud. And then you constantly try to synchronize the edge with the, the source of truth, right? Which is the policy or the configuration. But everything else is done locally, self-contained. So that means if you lose connectivity, the last policy is retained, right? The edge will continue to operate. And it's not like the first time we've done it, right? Like Kubernetes has done it. We have actually done this with our SD-WAN product, right? And we know that we can actually scale to 10 of thousands of nodes very easily with this model. So that's why we are bringing this technology or this approach, right, to, uh, to the edge. Mm -hmm. And um, if I may ask, so this is a new product or it's uh, some hybrid Aria Tanzu, uh, you know, offspring product? Or you build it from scratch or you build? Uh, it's not It's not from scratch. It's an evolution of uh, multiple products, right, that we have. Uh, we, we started with uh, our SD-WAN orchestrator, which is what we use today to uh, manage the SD-WAN devices, right? We have 10 of thousand of devices under management today. Um, and then we actually took a project uh, from our office of CTO uh, called Project Kesik, and this actually brought a desired state, uh, GitOps style configuration management 
to ESXi. And that's what we incorporate as the, the agent that is running at the edge compute. And then the third component, yeah. Edge is a VM, right? Or is a container? It, it is basically just a piece of software. Uh, oh, okay, so it's part of the car. A, yeah, it's, it's part of ESXi, yes. Well, all right, perfect. And then the third, yeah, it will be part of the ES, ESXi actually fully bundled and integrated in the image. And in fact, uh, if you want to, if anyone wants to try out this capability, you're taking slightly different approach this time, right? You can actually go and try out, even though the product, Vico itself is not for edge compute, it's not yet generally available, but customer can go and actually sign up to what we call a showcase. So that way they can start interacting and playing with the product, working with us on the product side to give us the feedback and when we actually have it released, um, hopefully there won't be any surprises, right? Like you want to actually Definitely, synchronize yeah. the Nobody wants the surprises, <laughs> especially here with, at the beginning. With the customer feedback, yeah. yeah. And that's, so, that's why we take a different approach this time. And then, sorry, the, the third component is still the vCenter control plane, right? That things that the customer love with, with VMware, with DRS and SA and all this, uh, all this multi-node configuration, the control plane also is brought down to the edge, right? So now you have the management and the control plane that allowed the edge to be fully autonomous uh, and now a desired state configs. Uh, how it resonates with the plus family? So we has vSphere plus, NSX plus, wherever plus, right? So everything like the, so that there was a huge movement over the last years to move the control plane into the cloud and with the VECO or, uh, family of Zeco product, if they will be, um, we we will see coming back of control plane. But as as usual, right now people start to move to this plus version. That it will come, they will go in common, or it's gonna be a separate line of licensing, and or this is gonna be part of the normal offering in the plus version of this field. Um, we cannot comment on the licensing just yet, right? right? But, okay. uh, but I can say that it. The the app the the management like the Veco in this case will be also available in the cloud initially. In fact, initially it will only be available in the cloud because that's how we can innovate quickly, right? Get the feedback, make changes, and then moving and then back. eventually we will make it available on prem because we understand that some of the customers uh, still want to have everything in their own control, so we want to make both options available. Um, and it's sort of aligned with the VMware strategy as well, right? To have sort of the management uh, planes available in the cloud. But for Edge, we want to have the control plane components, right? Just sitting at the Edge because of to deal with some of the uniqueness of the the Edge connectivity. Uh, that's why we want to do that. But the management will, will be available in the cloud as well as on-premise. Mm -hmm. Alexander, do you want to add something to it uh, from the from your perspective? No, I mean maybe just just to add maybe maybe another twist or perspective on on how we think about Vico Red right? and, and having that that pull capability instead of the push. It's also increasing the security posture or the strengthening the security posture of uh, many enterprises. Right at the moment, you're relying on people looking into Windows servers, updates, etc. And many of those are being, as we know, neglected because you simply don't have the staff, nor the time, the luxury of downtimes in the factory or, or elsewhere to actually update all your systems. Um, so having that capability to really automatically have these devices and your edge environments actually calling back home to have the latest configuration takes an, a huge burden of any IT or OT management away. So um, I think from that perspective as well, it, it's something that our customers are really looking forward to is to have that relief, kind of relief uh, to say, well, actually, you know, we don't need to proactively you know, monitor our security 
statuses out there uh, or the status of updates, et cetera, uh, or potential liabilities. Um, as we know, the edge locations are always the most prone ones to, to attacks, uh, especially now um, and especially in legacy environments. So that capability will definitely help um, getting them in a better position. Okay, uh, thank you. The, uh, my last question in this uh, new ideas category, uh, it's um, do you cook something else? We know about edge native apps, we know about Veckel. Is there uh, anything else in the portfolio that will claim or it's here already that you want to tell to, to our listeners? I mean, you've all heard, uh, you know, around our private AI, um, new capabilities being or having been announced at Explore, uh, both in Vegas and, and now in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's just, again, part of the evolution of what's happening in the market and the response, again, from VMware to say, well, actually, yes, we do understand all these AI technologies, capabilities, and platforms out there. But what we really need to do and help our customers with is have that ultimate control over where your model sit, where your data is generated, processed, and then stored, uh, so that you really also from a regulatory and legal perspective, as well as a privacy and security perspective, you do have that option to say, well, actually, I do need some sort of a, a sovereign private kind of platform that allows me to control my AI environment, whatever that whether that's traditional AI or Gen AI, right? Um, so I think that's just, again, it's an evolution, but I think also from a VMware perspective, just again, and I would say an expansion of our portfolio to also respond to, to new or changing market needs. The other thing I would add though is um, also, I mean, it's not just about the infrastructure that we, uh, we can manage at the edge, right? Over the time, there will be new services that we will, we will offer at the edge, right? For example, we also announced uh, recently the initial availability of private mobile network uh, as a service, uh, like basically private 5G uh, as a service that will be available from uh, like uh, through Veco as well, right? So meaning that as an enterprise who want to adopt private 5G, right? We will actually run the core uh, as a service, and now all you need to do is just connect the radio, and now you have a private 5G available uh, at your enterprise. So that is also available now uh, as the IA initial availability uh, from from VMware. All right. So when when we take all of this, what you're saying, you know, uh, there is for sure customers, uh, verticals, use cases that you feel the most suitable for this conversation. Where, where are you seeing from both strategy and technical perspective that edge model and uh, what you talk about today will find the, uh, will, will be used? Yeah, so from a strategic perspective and you know, me coming from within the industry, I think manufacturing is definitely one of the um, very, um, the, the next uh, or the, the best uh, vertical, I would say, to actually adopt more of those edge compute capabilities also as, um, I think, an, an evolution, finally, at attraction and scale of Industry 4.0, right? We've been talking about it for decades now. <laughs> Uh, and it's never really scaled because of that lacking capability at the edge, I would say. Um, and, you know, that the possibility of not really converging and bringing the, the IT and the OT worlds together. Uh, so manufacturing, definitely one one vertical to, to adopt quickly. And, and we see that already with some of our customers really demanding more of that, that capability and technology. The other one is retail. I mean, yeah, you know, exploding. Yeah, you know, consume. Well, <laughs> so right now, due to inflation, etc., it might go back again. Uh, but um, in, in general, we've seen an uptake in terms of yes, uh, online shopping, etc. Plus, then obviously, you know, smarter stores, um, smarter shelving, etc. So again, retail one of one of the key verticals as well. And then, as I said with my example earlier, healthcare. You know the the lack of um, talk to doctors and staff available in hospitals, every country pretty much reducing their 
healthcare system or shrink the healthcare system to the basics uh, to save costs, etc., doesn't really serve the patients better. So, as you can deploy remote uh, patient care, better ambulance services, etc., you need those smart capabilities at the edge, whether that's your hospital bed, your health device on your body, right, or uh, smart or remote radiology as teleradiology as we had also yeah, presented at Explore. Those are all capabilities that will also augment the healthcare system. Um, so I think those are sort of the the key verticals plus if you take in the, the macroeconomic environment um, into consideration with the wars going on, Russia, Ukraine, and then Middle East here, especially for Europeans, our you know, power supplies do rely on some of these uh, bigger nations um, and are in jeopardy uh, because we do have so much legacy. So again, the evolution of the legacy grid and, and assets into smarter infrastructure, um, again, requires better ca uh, compute capabilities, virtualization of such assets. So that's, again, another vertical that also VMware is heavily investing in um, in as part of a wider ecosystem approach uh, to really accelerate that transformation. Thanks. Um, I'm thinking here <clears throat> uh, if we can go uh, one by one a little bit. So, for example, Industry 4.0, uh, my, my friend, I have a joke that 4.0 is actually that there is supposed to be a dot missing. You know, it's 40, right? So in 40 years from 23 years ago when they tell this, will be there, right? But hopefully not, right? So um, Industry 4.0, I think it's a very interesting subject. You know, we have a lot of customers who are from production area and uh, they have edge. So it's not like they don't, right? They have, but it's very, maybe it's not very polite, but it's a very crippled version of the edge of the future, right? So they cannot make new innovations. So if it's going to be containers, they need to set up completely separate environment for containers, deploy some applications to get from their OT network something. And it's just an usable scale, right? So I, I, I think that you see the same picture here. So we can introduce the new solutions for uh, industry and what the solutions can be. So this is monitoring of OT environment. Uh, AI probably, do you, do you see the traction here? That we have some... Um, uh, as well then maybe collection of data or reprocessing data this is something that the edge can handle in your opinion absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah and and you can see it i mean um dr henning loser from audi said it very clearly in, in his um speech right that it needs to be a step-by-step -step approach you can't just assume that when you put an edge compute platform in place you can immediately automate the whole factory mm. right we, we do need to recognize that there is legacy and machinery out there that simply don't work on, yeah, you know, uh, or in a virtualized environment, and never will probably because they're just simply not set up for it. But I, yep. I believe that within the ecosystem and and our partnerships that we are creating, be it with Siemens, be it with um, ABB and Schneider and others, we're all pulling together to really now better software define a factory, right? Better. Um, establish those capabilities to be able to operate in a much more mm. automated environment. So I think that's really what was needed throughout that industry for zero hype is that, yes, everyone talked about these technologies, but then OEM equipment vendors really were still hardware driven, right? So it, or they it had never their own really... platforms. Exactly, so. exactly. So um, that's that rethinking now and a new approach, um, I think is much better geared towards what's really mm -hmm. needed. So basically what you're saying between the words means that the edge um, native apps approach or the edge computing from VMware, it's like, I think like six years ago or seven, I don't remember, you know, the too many years, uh, the VMware uh, introduced something called NFV, right? Platforms, Network Function Virtualization Platforms. So you, you did that to telcos in some cases, right? So you try to take out from the very expensive hardware and very sophisticated, dedicated types of hardware, this function that this hardware do and move it to x86 platform, right? To just make it more uh, agile. So I assume that here in industry, in the end, is the same idea. So we don't need to have four platforms from four different vendors, but we can put them into the one bucket run on VMware. That's the basic strategy idea that we can consolidate these platforms. Yep. All right. All right. So 
another thing that it's interesting, you know, and it is a question that uh, actually I collect some questions for our meeting uh, from my colleagues working in different verticals, colleagues from an industry, the question, uh, there is an NS6 for ARM, right? And um, do you plan, you know, like thinking about it to introduce the uh, edge capability on ARM or it's working already? Well, I would be saying that, I mean, we are evaluating, right, based on the customer needs, right? So I think uh, this is something that we are working uh, still very closely with the customer. Um, okay, very and, good. Yeah. Well said. So we are very well, customer well, driven, well, I will say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very nice. Very nice answer. I love it. Uh, the, the another one, why are asking that? Because I want to move a little bit further to our retail vertical because okay in factory generally you don't have problem with space right so you can have traditional servers you know hyper convergent monsters fire x rails vsun ready notes wherever you are comfortable with right so you have racks and plenty of space but when it comes to retail and um you know for example more or less in the city centers, square meter cost more than a couple servers, right? So if somebody wants to build a data center in the shop, let's say the investors doesn't like that idea because the square meter can sell more than to keep the infrastructure on top of it. So how are you thinking? Do you, do you, do you have in mind how you will shape the edge for retail? Maybe by this arm, but maybe other ideas. Some dedicated hardware, some partnership with vendors that they will create a little smaller and more compact packages. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll, I'll start and maybe <laughs> Alexandra can fill in, right? So, so I think I mean there, there are two two approaches to this, right? One is of course we are working with um, our partner, right? Like especially the hardware OEM and and nowadays when i actually go meet with the customer i always carry hardware around with me to show that hey the edge hardware is something i can even hold in one hand right exactly um so there are many many, many hardware models that uh, just came out in the market today that are actually optimized for edge it's not no longer this 19 inch uh rack mount right it's very small right maybe half the width uh, but very, very powerful, right? Some of these can even accommodate GPU on, on the hardware itself. Then there's another class of hardware, like we think like what we're doing with industrial PC, right? Uh, that also need to have this capability, right? The edge runtime capability. So we're working on both sides, right? One is to um, come up, I mean, still continue to support the new generation of hardware that's coming out more, more and more optimized for edge. The other part is actually look at the type of edge devices that are getting deployed today by our customer and and support them. Question from my team, retailing, retail and one customer, because we just want to, you know, like talk a little bit on the real case scenario. So one of the customers imagine the situation that they have SaaS, uh, so not SaaS, uh, the sd van Velo crowd, sd van device, right? And they used to the fact that, you know, for some functions, they will always need hardware. But when they talk about edge, they start to think like, hey, we can like uh, virtualize all the functions on our edge cluster. Because we with the VECO, for example, we'll have the edge cluster one way or another, right? So the sd blah, 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 and other functions, you know, uh, I know Honeywell, uh, Siemens, and wherever, Lightning, uh, uh, the, you know, like managing of light, light and so on, everything we can put on that box. And this seems to very interesting for them. Of course, on the hardware that they will install inside the um, electric, uh, yeah, like, uh, like, I don't know, let's like fuse places, yeah, cabinets, exactly. Because for them, you know, it's just saving the money basically, so they can extend the shop even further, right? And yeah. do, do you see that in your strategy to just go for that sec for that segments as well? Like, let's go with the functions there. One, turn off other hardware. Yeah, I, I would say it, it depends on the specific use cases, right, and scenario. Like, for example, if it is somewhere further down in, like, let's say in the wind turbine or in the maybe like a police car, right? It probably makes sense to maybe just deploy one box that can run your WAN connectivity, right? And security services 
and then some workload, right? Because it sort of space is becoming a premium. But then if you go into, I don't know, maybe like a factory, right? That uh, you may have a few nodes, right? And it's a pretty massive um, infrastructure, right? So you may have the van sitting somewhere else and compute sitting somewhere else. Then in that case, may not make it make sense to actually just collapse everything in one box. Um, so we see we see both scenarios, and we you have to continue to support both. Mm, okay, cool, thank you. And um, the last but not least, you know, uh, healthcare that we talk about. The, uh, most of the healthcare technology, uh, let's say, like OT technology, is proprietary. Uh, when you talk with the partners uh, from the technical perspective as well. Uh, do they see the chance in uh, introducing their proprietary technological model into some kind of virtualized function to uh, bring on the common platform? Or this is something like, yeah, <laughs> how, how are you seeing that? Because maybe you have experience to talk with, uh, with the customers as well, if they feel comfortable with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's got a bit lost uh, during Explore, but I mean, Siemens Health in Years is, is a great example of, of how remote radiology and, and equipment can be changed to actually include some of that, that edge capability, right? So rethinking the model on how you deliver uh, those capabilities that you used to have in a big stack, big equipment type mm. thing to actually have much more nimble kind of infrastructure and then really just manage updates deployments and and certain apps uh, to that radiologist uh, as needed um, so very different way of thinking but i think as we see it in the industrial space there is a very much a rethinking of how you do business and how you deploy capabilities mm -hmm. towards your end customers or consumers um, and the same happens in, in healthcare yes Completely understandable. Thank you very much. Um, you know, to sum it up our our conversation, I think that uh, at last we turn back our head to the edge uh, again and call it the edge cloud, which I love because it's a cloud in there. So we will still be there, you know. <laughs> so it's not on-prem and the, all the hybrid cloud, but we have edge cloud. Um, I believe that there is a chance to bring to the tempo, to the, to, to the speed uh, our infrastructures that they are for most of the companies, they were base of their operation for many years. And now they will be able to get the same or very similar feeling for the new type application and new use cases. Um, Ricky, really look forward to it, especially I, we had the question in the Edge panel during Explore. Somebody asked the question like, um, do you plan to include the Edge into your strategy? Uh, and my answer was, yeah, we're doing it 20 years. You know, we don't, we don't supposed to take it out, just, just make it better. So thank you very much for this conversation. And um, I hope this opened a little bit uh, idea what the VMware investing, how their approach for many true believers in infrastructure, this brings for sure, you know, like oh, the bread that at last, you know, at last they came back. Right. So uh, we're very happy. Um, and, um, Definitely, uh, for another evolution casts, uh, we will talk about in more deep dive how we'll do the Tanzo on top of it, how we'll do the uh, Tanzo service mesh, because I believe that it's going to be very uh, important part of it. How we will talk about Veco and hopefully in some demo uh, demo uh, that we do on our channel as well, we'll show it and how it works. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, with us, Kangwan. Uh, from Viewer and Alexandra. Uh, my name is Ma Ma was Maciek Lelusz, and uh, this was Evolution Cast about edge modernization. See you soon.